Hi there. Today we're going to talk about Lesson 86. And Lesson 86 has to do with number families. There's a little bit of vocabulary that you need to know with number families. Start out with one of the number families that we're going to be talking about is called the counting numbers. And we count with the counting numbers. We don't start when we count, we don't start with zero. We count one, two, three, four. And so a list of the counting numbers would be, and these brackets are usually used when we're listing numbers. A list of the counting numbers would be one, two, three, four, and these three dots mean it goes on forever. Another set of numbers includes the counting numbers, but then it adds one. Actually, it adds zero. It adds a number. The number is zero, and we don't count with zero, but zero is a part of the whole numbers. The next group is called the integers, and the integers include all of the whole numbers and their opposites. So if you have one, you would have negative one, two, negative two, three, negative three, a hundred, negative hundred. I made a list of them down here. Zero doesn't have a negative, but it is a part of the whole number, so that's why it's included with, included with the integers. Okay? Notice you don't see any fractions when you see the list of integers, unless you were to see 2 over 1 or 3 over 1. It is just the whole numbers and their opposites. There's one more set that we haven't talked about, and it's called the rational numbers. And this is all of the numbers that can be written as a ratio or a fraction of two integers. Here's a really good list. Two-fifths, negative one-third, nine over seven, negative six over ten, negative eight over one. And then this complex fraction, one-third over two-sevenths. Okay, that's still irrational. 2 and 1 third can be turned into 7 thirds, and therefore all mixed numbers are rational because they can be written as improper fractions. They can be written as improper fractions. <clears throat> now, you might want to get your colored pencils out because the next thing I'm going to show you is a nice little diagram that shows how the numbers all fit together. Now, all of the rational numbers, we're going to ignore what's on the side here, all of the rational numbers include all of these in the middle, okay? The integers include the whole numbers and the counting numbers. The whole numbers include the counting numbers. The smallest group, of course, is the counting numbers. You add zero to the counting numbers and you get the whole numbers. You add the opposite of the whole numbers and you get the integers and you add any kind of a fraction that can be written with an integer and you get the rational numbers. Now, what numbers are not included? Well, they're the ones that are roaming around on the outside here in red and those are called the irrational numbers. So you most often see irrational numbers as pi or square root of three or square root of two or square root of eleven. Those are numbers that cannot be written. You can't ever get to the end of them. They're non-repeating, non-terminating uh, decimals um, like pi. Um, square root 11 is like that. Square root 2 is like that. They're, uh, they, don't, they go on forever and ever and ever. They don't terminate and there's not a repeating to them. So I made this chart. I would like you to make this chart and put it in your notebook so that you have it. If you have questions about it or if you have a question about whether something is rational, Anything that's inside, included inside of this purple box, any number that's included with anything that's inside this group, it's going to be a rational number. If it's not included in these groups in here, okay, then it's irrational. Okay, now, here's a little sidebar and it's a part of our lesson. If we were to list integers less than two and the brackets, remember those brackets I was talking about, they look like this. Okay, and I wanted you to list integers less than 2. This is what you would do. This is how it would look. Integers less than 2. You would have dot, 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 negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, comma, 1. 
You can't list 2 because it has to be integers less than 2. There's nothing between 2 and 1. No integer, anyway, between 2 and 1, except 1. Okay, and these would go on forever and ever and ever negatively. Now, if I was going to graph that, I would put it on a number line, and it would look like this. I would have a number line. I would have positive and negative. I'd have 0 here. And it is integers less than 2, with 2 would not be included. And notice that the dots are only on the integers themselves. You would not include anything in between them because an integer is only a whole number's opposite, a whole number in its opposite. So there's not fractions, there's not decimals, there's not any of those numbers in between. So when you graph integers, you only put a dot on the integer and not on everything in between. Got that? Sure you get that in your notes. Now, here's a couple little challenge questions. And please write them in your notes and then answer them. True or false? All whole numbers are integers. True or false? Look at the chart. True or false? All rational numbers are whole numbers. True or false? Look at the chart. Thanks a lot. Hope this was helpful. Have any questions, be sure to ask me in class. Have an awesome, awesome day. Thanks.